Imagine this. A thunderstorm comes through your village. Power cables snap, your lights flicker, and in an instant, you're plunged into darkness. No lights, no refrigerator, and worst of all, no running water. In that moment, most would panic. But on an Amish farm, it's just another peaceful evening. No shouting, no scrambling, no buckets of panic. The water keeps flowing. The barn chores are completed. Life continues. Because for centuries, the Amish have structured their lives around beyond the barn living, depending on what works, not what's cool. And their water systems? They're a masterclass in simplicity, self-sufficiency, and plain old brilliance. Let's begin with something that sounds like it was invented by a science museum, the hydraulic ram pump. No wires, no batteries, no gasoline. Just gravity, water, and one brilliant piece of engineering. The system begins with a stream or spring somewhere on a hill. Water rushes down a pipe, known as the drive pipe, picking up speed as if it's sliding down a slide. When it crashes into a valve at the bottom, the valve slams shut with a resounding k-thunk. And that tiny noise? That's music to Amish ears. It means the system is functioning. That abrupt stop creates pressure. Now the water is anxious to get out, but the only direction it can head is upward. This is the water hammer effect, and it's not a trivial affair. That pressure blasts some of the water upward into an air chamber, a balloon-like contraption. Squeezed, the air expands, pressing back and causing water to rush through another pipe and uphill to where it is needed. A house. A garden. A trough in the barn. Now here's the magic. A three-foot drop in height can propel water 150 feet high. Think about that. That's like tossing a ball from your porch and landing it on top of a 15-story building. All without a motor. Once it's up and running, a ram pump never stops. It quietly hums along, repeating the cycle again and again. Water flows, the valve slams, pressure builds, and up it goes. No maintenance crews. No outages. Just water on demand. It's like having a farmhand that never sleeps, never complains, and never sends you a bill. Although only a mere 10 to 20% of the water is actually being pumped up, that's still thousands of gallons daily if your stream is constant. And for the Amish, it usually is. But not all land is graced with an easy hillside stream. That's where the windmill comes in, and not the adorable little decorative kind either. The Amish construct windmills that function. They're tall, steel-built, and more like working pinwheels than the old-fashioned Dutch kind. These are wind-starving machines. Even a gentle wind, only 5 miles per hour, is sufficient to cause the blades to turn. And when they do, the entire system down below is activated. At the bottom of a deep well, perhaps 400 feet down, is a reciprocating pump. As the wind spins the blades, a long steel rod goes up and down, driving leather-cupped pistons within the cylinder. Stroke after stroke, water creeps inch by inch until it finally reaches the surface. Is it quick? Not really, but it's reliable. And with water, reliability is everything. Most Amish windmill systems also feature large storage tanks that function as water banks. They fill up when the wind is favorable and on quiet days that reserve powers the farm. Even a small system pumping two gallons per minute generates almost 3,000 gallons per day. That's enough to fill 50 bathtubs without paying a single cent for electricity. And these systems aren't flimsy. Some windmills have been in operation for more than five decades, requiring only annual greasing and occasional replacement of leather seals. When a storm blows through and destroys every power line in the county, the windmill just continues to spin. But what if your property is blessed with something even better? A natural spring. That's the holy grail of off-grid water. A spring emerging from a hillside provides year-round flow, and gravity does the work. No moving parts, no pressure tanks, just clean spring water pipe to your property 24-7. But now, the Amish don't simply let water run amok. They create filtration systems made of gravel, sand, and charcoal, homemade from hardwood sometimes, to make the water remain clean. 
old-fashioned meets nature science. And yes, even pressure tanks they construct to control flow and lessen pressure drops when everyone's running laundry or scrubbing up for dinner. A good spring at 2 to 10 gallons per minute? That's 2,880 to 14,400 gallons per day. Plenty to take care of a family, their animals, and even the neighboring properties. Amish farms with good springs commonly share their water supply. And what about maintenance? Near laughably easy. Simply clean out the filters from time to time and ensure that the flow remains open. A Pennsylvania Amish farmer once informed us, the most difficult aspect of the upkeep of a spring system is recalling to preserve it. And not all farms contain hills or springs or wind. And then the hand pump is the key. Now, if you're picturing one of those squeaky old pumps from grandma's backyard that needed 10 minutes of arm flailing to get a trickle of water, forget that. Amish hand pumps are smart, efficient. They use a double action cylinder, meaning they pump on the push and the pull. Add in ball bearings and a perfectly balanced lever, and you've got smooth motion. Even a 10-year-old can help fill the water barrel. And they considered winter as well. The pump self-drains after being used, so nothing freezes. Ice in pipes? No worries when there is no water lingering within them. Some of these pumps suck up water from 150 feet below, and they're so rugged that families have used the same one for three generations. One farmer reported that his pump lived through being struck by a runaway horse cart. The cart, unfortunately, was not so fortunate. But the real genius is when you put all of these systems together in one. The elevated tank method. It's simple but powerful. Suspend a gigantic tank, usually one, zero, zero, zero plus gallons, in the air atop a platform roughly 15 to 20 feet off the ground. Refill it gradually with a ram pump, windmill, or spring. Then gravity does the rest. No additional pumps. No elbow grease. Just turn the tap, and water runs along underground pipes to the house, the barn, the workshop. Everything gets pressured. Everything remains supplied. And when laundry day arrives or there's a barn raising community function, the system takes care of it without batting an eye. One Amish father joked, it's like having a second well, except it's just sitting up in the air, waiting to work. These systems hold as much water as the entire farm uses for a week or more. And the best part? They function whether the wind blows, the stream goes dry, or the pump takes a day off. This is beyond the barn living at its best. It's not glitzy. It's not complex. But it works, because it's founded on respect for nature, common sense engineering, and a conviction that less can be more. And so while the new world runs on touchscreens and tech support, the Amish are out there with rushing water, clean hands, and productive farms, driven not by apps, but by brains. And maybe that's precisely what the rest of us need to be learning to do. And that's it, water, running day and night, without electricity, bills, or stress. The Amish don't merely exist off-grid, they flourish, with such simple and ingenious systems, you find yourself asking why we ever gave them up for frangible wires and flickering lights. If this motivated you, don't scroll on by, leave a comment. Let me know which approach amazed you the most, or tell me about your own experience with off-grid living. I'd love to hear it. These aren't tips, they're lifelines. So click that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and come with me on this adventure into actual, sustainable life, the kind that functions whether the grid is on or not. See you next time, stay prepared, stay grounded, and continue living beyond the barn.